Hey, 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 lovely people. Welcome to my channel. Being a carer with more kiss. A few days ago, I had, you know, a few of my colleagues in the training session. And, I, you know, we got talking, rather. And I decided to pick their brains on what they think a carer needs to excel on the job. They have some very interesting things to say. Now, you might want to sit down and have a listen to what they have to say. My name is Kesiana Akwara Ati, a health and social care trainer. To all of you, my old and new returning subscribers, a gazillion Mexi Boko. And hey, hey, lovely mentees, I want you all to know that you are so loved and I'm just a telephone call away. And hey, hey, if you are just watching this channel for the first time, hi there, what are you waiting for? Join this awesome, ever-growing family. And believe me, you will be glad that you did. All right? So do me a favor, yeah? Smash the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. You know, like the video. And of course, don't forget to click on that all-important notification bell. So whenever I upload a new video, you, my dear, will be among the very first to know. Freely connect with me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Care by Kes. And I will see you there. So what are these things, you know, without wasting much of your time, that my colleague said a carer needs, you know, to excel on the job? Now, bear in mind that these colleagues of mine, one has about over 60 years experience on the job, of course, in different capacities and in different roles. And the other one has over 20 years experience, again, in different capacity and different roles. She's worked in domiciliary, you know, both of them rather have worked in domiciliary, care homes, nursing homes, support work. At the moment, they both do support work. And so they got talking. So one of the things, you know, they think a carer needs to excel on the job is a good and caring heart. Yes. Because you're looking after people who don't even know who they are anymore. You're looking after the vulnerable people, the elderly people in society. And so if you don't have a good and caring heart, how can you show them the love that they deserve? Because the truth is that some of them do not have any existing family members. It's just them. So you must be able to, to treat them with love. Some will say as though they were your family. But of course, understanding that there's a professional boundary, don't be, go beyond that boundary. Now, they're also of the opinion that you have to look out for yourself. Now, the idea that at your place of work, you have a best friend, <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> not advisable. Why? Because your best friend at your place of work might be the one to stab you in the back. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some very beautiful, awesome, I mean, angelic people out there who are friends to the very end, who will stick closer than a brother. I get it. But at the same time, there are those who are not exactly your friends. Now, let me tell you a story. Now, I had these tier two visa um, people coming to my training sessions. And then one of them told us this story. Very interesting one. And she says to us that um, these two um, ladies or individuals, rather, I rather use the word individuals, you know, they met on the job. And being that they were from the same in the country of origin, they got talking and they became supposedly close parties, friends, <laughs> BFFs. <laughs> uh, and then... One of them told the other one what she did to secure, you know, her, her you know, sponsorship thingy and what she did. Now, she thought she was talking to a friend, a fellow country woman or man or whatever. Now, only for this supposed friend at work. <laughs> I mean, this friend goes on to tell management that, um... I don't think so and so and so and so did this, they did this, they did that, they confided in me, blah, 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 blah. And then what happens? The office or management now sends an email to say, um, we're going to process city of your documents and all of that. And guess what? As we speak, she has been sacked. All because of BBF at work. Mm -mm. And the honest truth is that the enemy of a carer is a carer. If you must do best friends, not at your place of work. Some of you may say, oh, yes, you're talking gibberish. I get it. But from experience, I will tell you, not at your place of work, somewhere else. And again, be careful what you share with people. Because you never know who has your back and who doesn't. Another point they raised was that 
as a carer, what you need to excel on the job is, is also that you must learn to develop yourself. And I, I say this all the time. Do not say to yourself, oh, I am here now as a carer. So, yes, we, we wait out or we sell out or we, you know, we ride out the five years and I get my indefinite leave to remain. And that's that. No. Develop yourself. Because I say this all the time to whoever cares to listen. When preparation meets opportunity, it is a great, excellent marriage. Now, I have mentees who have said to me, oh, Kes, I want to do this course. Oh, Kes, I'm doing that. I have some mentees who are saying to me that they have enrolled for a, a level five, MVP level five course. And I'm like, yes, that's the spirit. Go ahead. So please don't sit on your oars and say to yourself, okay, I'm going to ride out the five years and you know, get my, my ILR. No, develop yourself in the process. And remember, do not use government-funded courses. If you have to pay for it, I'm sure you can, you can come to an instrumental uh, payment agreement with the provider of the course you are going for. Does that make sense, people? Now, we also agree that as a carer, you must be able to respect the diversity of the people we care for. Why? Because it, we have a very you know, diverse community of people we look after. Some are Europeans, Asians, Africans. I mean, the whole nine yards. So you must respect each and every one of them, their beliefs, their opinions, their views, if they can still, if they can still you know, recollect what those are. And if necessary, go the extra mile for them to see that they are comfortable at every point in time. But And of course, knowing and respecting your professional boundaries. All right? All collectively agree that as a carer, one thing you must bear in mind is this. Do not do it for the money. If that makes any sense. Why? Because you'll be frustrated. You will be frustrated because you might not... This work takes a toll on you, if I may say so. It takes a toll on your mental health. It takes a toll on your physical body. Particularly when you have to hoist from morning to night. Also, when you work with people that have learning disabilities... And mental illnesses, it takes on your, your toll, you know, on your own mental health. So if you are doing it for the money, I am sorry, you will be frustrated. And in some cases, you will pour that frustration on the innocent people you are looking after. And when you do that, <laughs> you know what happens. Social services comes for you. The police comes for you. And their families, if they have any, come for you. So what are you going to do? So you are better off staying away from the job. If you are fed up, just quit, resign, go do something else. The point raised as to what a carer needs to excel is that you must have a civil working relationship with your colleagues and an excellent professional relationship with those you look after. The service users, the clients, the residents, I mean your patients, whatever the case might be, it is important. Now, I do know that some colleagues can be, you know, <laughs> something else. But have a civil relationship as much as you can. Watch your back. Document everything you do. So nobody has, you know, a hold on you whatsoever. Finally, we also agree that a carer needs to have excellent communication skills to be able to excel on the job. Yes, you must be a good listener. Because sometimes all they want to do is talk. And they want someone to listen, to smile, to say all oh, the oohs, oh wows, oh my gosh, and all of that. Now, you might not make sense of what they are saying. But just, you know, your exclamations, your ooh, your ah, your wow, oh my gosh. It gets them excited. And they are happy that somebody can, can listen to them. And if possible, understand what they are saying. And if you do understand what they are saying, a little bit of contribution would help. It makes them feel good that they haven't exactly totally lost their marbles, if that makes any sense. All right? So I hope this helps some of you out there who are struggling. And remember this, that no matter what the matter is, you, my darlings, you matter so much more. Au revoir.